Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. This is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, and unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about a 2003 Spiel de Jar winner, the tile placement game Alhambra by Dirk Hen and published by Queen games and in this game you'll be drawing currency from a display you'll be purchasing tiles to lay out in front of you to build your alhambra and whoever's got the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this <laughs> Board games, 4K. So Alhambra, how do you play this game? So what you do, everybody's got a little fountain tile, or in our case, we've got a deluxe edition, we've got a fountain, wooden fountain thing, so you stick that out in front of you, and you'll be using that fountain as a center point to expand your Alhambra. So this game is divided into three phases. The first phase, you will be taking some money. The second phase, you'll be buying tiles and laying them out in front of you. And the third phase, you'll be able to jig around and redesign your Alhambra and your building and all that sort of stuff. Phase number one is you will take some money. So on a board, you will have a display of currency cards and each currency has, has got a different color, right? So you'll, you'll choose some currency to take. You can either take one card or you can take multiple cards as long as they don't add up to over five. So you'll see that all these cards have a different color on them and they refer to the building offer where you've got your tiles for sale. And that leads us on to phase number two. So in the, in the second phase, what you'll be doing, you'll be looking at down the, the tile offer and you'll be looking at the color of the currency that you will have to use to buy the tile of your choice. And what you do, you'll choose your tile and you pay your money, but you don't get no change. Right, so you'll see that each tile has got a different color and that refers to the scoring card that is nestled inside the currency deck. So when that's revealed, you will go into a scoring phase, right? But we'll talk about that in a bit. So you'll see that pink tiles are worth a lot more than blue tiles and they're, they're worth varying amounts. And you've also see you've got uh, black walls that go around some of the tiles and in the scoring phase, you will be getting points for the longest uninterrupted wall that you can build. So you place a tile in front of you initially against one of the sides of your fountain, but you've got to remember that any subsequent tiles that you do place have to match like for like. So a wall must be placed against the wall and an open side must be placed against an open side. And there's one more rule that you've got to remember is that you've got to be able to walk from your fountain to the tile that you just placed. So you can't have any gaps or you, you can't walk through walls. So that's one thing that you must remember to do. So the third phase in this game is you're going to be able to re redesign your Alhambra and everybody's got like a, a reserve space that they can place tiles that they don't want to use yet. So you can either take a tile from your reserve and place it into your Alhambra. You can take a tile off of your Alhambra and place it in your reserve. Or you can do swapsies and you can take one off and put one on. So that's the three phases of the game. So there's two scoring cards and three scoring phases in this game. And when the two scoring cards are revealed, what you do, you go through in the first phase, only the person with the most of each colored tile will score points. In the second phase, or the person with the first and, and the person with the second most number of those tiles. And in the final phase, at the end of the game, it'll be the first, second, and third person. And if there's a tie, you add up those two numbers and then you split them in half and round down. So also in the scoring phases, what you do, you'll look at your longest uninterrupted wall and you'll count, you'll get one point for each of those sides, not tiles, but sides of those walls that you that make up the longest one. And if you've got double walls that sort of go together like that, they don't score, right? So once there's not enough tiles in the bag to replenish the building offer, then the game ends, you do your final scoring phase and the person with the most victory points is the winner of Alhambra. So what do we like about Alhambra? So the first thing that we really enjoy about this game is the fact that you don't get any change when you take your money. So that really does force you into a, so a, a choice of balancing the, the choice of the money against the choice of the tile. So do you take one card that's worth you know eight money or do you take, say, three cards that add up to five so you've got more chance, more 
more variety of, of types of currency in your hand. So that's, that's a really nice and uh, difficult choice to make. So the second thing that we really enjoy about our Hambra is the scoring card. So there, what you do when, when you first play, when you set up this game, you divide the currency deck into five sort of roughly equal portions and then you stick the two scoring cards in the in between the in between some of these these portions and that means you never know when it's going to come out right so you're sort of sitting there thinking it's got to come it's got to come out in a minute it's got to come out in a minute it's got to come out in a minute and it, it don't come out so and then when just as you think you know it's, it's not coming out it comes out and then you, there you go and that's really good because everyone goes where are you it's a scoring tile right it's a scoring card so yeah we can have some we can get our points down and you know that's uh, the fact that you don't know when it's going to come out is a really exciting thing so another thing that we really enjoy about this is the is the two ways of scoring so not only do you get sort of a there's a majority aspect with the, in the with regards to, to the tiles right there's also that longest wall and that can be really really lucrative you can get that down you can get your your wall up together and it's not about majority it's not whoever's got the longest wall everybody gets the points so you could you can really really bump up your, your score in the scoring phases with the longest wall and that it really does make a big difference so another thing when i say time i talk about we really like this game but another thing we really like is a, it's sort of like like car like why we like carcassonne is it's really fantastic to watch your alhambra grow and evolve as, as time goes by and the fact you can you can manipulate it you can dump out the, the rubbish tiles you don't want and, and and you've got that reserve tile so you can dump stuff out and, and mix stuff up and throw things in and out and you, you know you know once you place a tile it's not stuck there so yeah we really really like the way that the alhambra grows and evolves throughout the game so what don't we like about alhambra so the first thing that we really find frustrating about alhambra is the way that the currency doesn't come out in any sort of structured fashion right so you might have like all the blues come out at the beginning of the game or you might have say a load of load of ones in the in the center portion of the game so you, you can't really you know just as you're sort of, you're really trying to trying to develop a, strat a strategy for this game you you know that all the blues are gone all the all the, the expensive brown cards are gone so it's very very difficult to formulate a strategy based on the, the really sort of uh, pot luck random nature of the currency draw so the second thing that we find frustrating about alhambra is uh, and this this might not might not make a lot of sense because we did say that we liked this portion of the game but on the flip side of that it is also frustrating so it's like a double-edged sword it's the fact the longest wall could be overpowered i mean you know if you if you if you're concentrating on the majorities aspect of the game and you, you might find that uh, you can't the way the tiles come out the random nature of the, of the currency and the tiles means that you can't get that longest wall up together someone could be powering through and have this massive longest wall about 25 sides long and that really does push through the game so if you can get your if you can get your longest wall really really long over the course of those three scorer phases that is going to score you a massive massive amount of points that could be a game breaker sometimes when you play this game really it's a sort of like a, a summary about what what the biggest problem with this game is is that the it's, it's heavily heavily luck based right so what you're doing you've got these random elements that are just thrown out on the board and then it's up to you to sort of try and use those random the random nature of the game to your best advantage and it, it seems to me that this game might be slightly too random on occasion so you've got the random nature of the currency you've got the random nature of the draw tiles and when they come together in one it's very very difficult to sort of it's almost like a case of you're just sort of hoping that something's going to come out and hoping that you're going to get the currency you want you're hoping that you're going to get the tiles that you need and there's a lot of groaning when you when you pull the tiles out oh, it's not what i wanted or somebody else takes the tile that you want so it's, it's all to do with the turn order as well when you when your turn comes around you might have missed out on the one that you really want through no fault of your own so it's, yeah that's 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 the main main con about this game is the random the overly random nature of this game so to summarize is alhambra the spiel de Char winner of 2003 still worth playing 16 years after it won that award <laughs> So we're going to say that this is an excellent, excellent, excellent tile placement game that still holds up today. So if this was released today, it would be a gateway game, right? Because it's very, very simple. But it's still, I think this would still be a classic 
if it was released today. So, you know, the, I, we haven't played the standard version, but the deluxe edition is absolutely gorgeous looking. You know, the quality of the components, the wooden fountains and the board, and the way that everything just works together, and it looks absolutely stunning on the table. You know, there, there is that thing where you need a lot of room because your alhambra is going to be expanding. You might have to jiggle some tiles around. So that's, a, that's another con that we I only just thought about, right? So, um, yeah, we're going to say that we're going to give this game four stars, right? I mean, because of the random nature, but it's still really, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's great, it's a, it plays like six players, so if you can get six players to the table, this, I mean, it, the turns are really, really quick, but it, you know, it will give you a, a nice uh, challenge to sort of try and make uh, order out of chaos, so to speak. So, um, yeah, so uh, so this game deserves to be in your collection. So that's Alhambra. If you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below, and we'll see you next time.